Hey guys, welcome back to more AFK Arena. In today's video, we're going to go through the Graveborn engravings. They're all here. So for me personally, I don't see any Graveborns that I'm overly pumped about, but I could have missed something. Something could be really nice. There's, there's a few that are like, like the 60 is like, oh, that's not a bad buff. But the problem is it's the investment of getting it to 60 that you need to do. So... We'll, we'll go through them. Like I said, there's some okay ones, but there's nothing that completely blew my mind in here. Let me know if you guys think I'm wrong and if there's something absolutely amazing. But we'll kick it off with Grizzul. Um, this one here, shield's value gets increased. Like, it's not a bad little increase uh, on the shield, but it's nothing that's going to, like, completely destroy the game. Um, during the battles, the time of all debuffs dealt to allies by intelligence-based enemies is reduced by 20%. So you get the, the the CC reduction. Maybe, like, does this make him a bit of a PvP thing for countering, like, CC? Like, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's like, once again, not bad little buffs if they were just basic to his skill, but the investment you need to go through to get there, I, you know, it's a bit steep. Uh, and then if we go to engravings and check the stats on him, uh, we do get accuracy. So that's Grizzul. Shamira just gives a little damage increase. This one here, after using the ultimate ability, Tortured Souls, Shamira ignores all health requirements and receives the maximum damage increase, which lasts for eight seconds. So, you know, she gets the full 30%, uh, 40%. So it's not changing Shamira. I don't even care what stat she gets. She's, she's not going to work end game is it's the problem. Uh, magical Pierce. Okay. Next up, we've got Thorin. Thorin's attack rating is increased by 20% for 10 seconds after being resurrected. Doesn't really matter. While cursed, the enemy target's health recovery is reduced by 50%. Once again, that's a, not a bad one, but like not really necessary in the way you use Thorin anyway. It's just grouping him up and cheesing, so... Not really that important. Once again, we will check this. We get uh, Magic Resistance... Uh, this one here, Isabella. So I don't mind Isabella's. She's probably the one I like the most, but that's probably because I just really like Isabella in general. Uh, if Isabella finishes casting her spell without being interrupted, she permanently steals 30 points uh, of the enemy target's crit rating, which was previously 20 points. So an extra 10 she steals. Each time Isabella has successfully cast a spell without being interrupted, her casting speed increased by 5%. Ability can be stacked up to five times. It's a 25% increase. It's not too bad. Like I said, this is one of those ones, if that was at 30, I'd be like pumped, but it's at 60, so I don't know if, I don't think it's like, I don't think if Isabella's good enough to warrant it, but it is a nice buff for Isabella in herself. Next up, Nara. Uh, the target enemy bleed, yada yada yada, which cause 70% damage per second. You know, a little, little increase. Uh, sorry, we didn't look at Isabella's uh, engraving stats. Uh... And why is she getting physical resistance? I don't like that at all. Um, okay. A single target can receive the effects of the ability uh, up to five times per 10 seconds. That's up from four. Once again, Nara, not, not a crazy one. Doesn't really get me excited. We've got a bit of accuracy on Nara. Pharrell, I don't mind this one. If fewer than three enemies are, ter are, are terrified, enemies are stunned for four seconds instead. If you, know, you hit something with an immunity or something like that, gets the extra duration. Not too bad. Like, and that's a 30. So, like, a Pharrell's 30 is kind of cool. Um, any, and I think, okay, so Pharrell's, I think this could be really solid. Um, any spirits which are summoned due to Pharrell's abilities will remain on the battlefield for seven seconds, up from five seconds. I feel like this could be impactful. I feel like Pharrell, like, even though it's just a number increase, five to seven seconds is a big difference for stacking and the amount of effects that you actually get from Pharrell's ones. So, maybe that could be a thing. Maybe. Um, oh, yeah, we need stats. What you getting, Pharrell? Physical resistance. Yuck. Uh, okay, we get a damage increase. Baden's one interesting here. Uh, if there are more than four phantoms on the battlefield, the original Baden becomes untargetable for four seconds. This effect can only be triggered once every 15 seconds. You know, I don't think it's going to make Baden irrelevant personally. Um, and then we get physical pierce on him. At least he gets a relevant stat. Then we have Kelfa. Damage received by enemies increased by 50% for 13 seconds, up from 10 seconds. Um, and this one here. Kelfa's attack rating is increased by 25% um, up until the enemy that originally killed him is slain. So I don't think that's really going to like break the world for Kelfa either, unfortunately. I still like Kelfa in some situations. I think he's not too bad. And he does go ahead and get some accuracy. And then we have Silas. So Silas is one. This goes to 40% here uh, of his attack, up from 30. Uh, and this one here, allies within the gas cloud radius receive 10% less damage from enemies. Once again, not too bad. Not game breaking. 
Cool beans. What do we got? Physical resistance. Then we have Odin. We get a damage increase on this one, which I'm always happy for a damage increase on Odin. Anything on Odin is actually just good because Odin's good, but it's not that crazy. And then we have Odin's attack ratings increased by 18% and his haste increased by 20 points each time he opens an eye. Now, considering he has three eyes, that's going to be a 3% attack times three. So that's a 9% attack increase for him. Um, and a 15... What is it? Yeah, yeah. And then a 15 extra haste point increase so that's actually not too bad on odin i don't think he needs it in most situations so i don't think it's gonna be like a go-to one but it's a nice little buff um and crit damage reduction what are these weird stats uh okay izold's getting the extra attack on that one and then this gets increased to 10 seconds from eight seconds it's really null and void this when you look at his um is it furniture or syndrome doesn't matter whichever one it is you don't really need this so you know Izold's not really relevant as well in my opinion uh, and we get magic resistance on him as well and then we got torn we got a damage increase there which is trash this one goes from 40 to 50 percent of max HP restored not not going to make him like broken at all uh, and we do get wait what's that what's 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 our H what is our H I had to go look. I couldn't remember it. It's received healing. Okay, there we go. That's the stat increase there. Uh, Damon, damage dealt by Stitchy's uh, three attacks is increased to 220%, up from 200%. Okay. And then this one, Damon deals an additional damage equal to 10% of his shield's value to the enemy. Additional damage cannot exceed 300% of Damon's own attack rating. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit of extra damage, but it's not crazy. It effectively can double the damage that this is dealing uh, from this one, but it's not like game-breaking. So you know whatevs but let's see what he does have here he has got some crit on that one which isn't really the most necessary thing but you know you'll take it um then we have creepy hand lady get damage increase on that one uh and this one ability is now triggered when Thaewin reaches any receives any damage that exceeds eight percent uh instead of ten percent of her health and let's go down here physical pierce as well desira the most injured ally gradually restores 28% up from 24%. Uh, amount of health recovered is equal to 22% of Desire's attack rating up from 20%. And what are we getting? What are we getting? Uh, health recovery. So uh, let's go here. What have we got? We've got a damage increase on... What's his face? I've just forgotten his name for a sec. Hodgkin. Yes, that's it. Uh, block time is ignored and Hodgkin shall always deal damage equal to 20% of his target's max health. Uh, so it's just taking the condition away from it. Um, but I don't think it's going to make him broken because it's just one ability that's dealing that extra damage. So like I said, he is the last one. He does get some magic resistance. Pretty lackluster. The Maulers and Wilders are really... I mean, no, what was it? Was it, was it the Maulers and Raku is pretty cool. But the Maulers and Lightbearers, I got the most excited for, I think. Uh, and, you know, Graveborn's gone back to nothing too crazy exciting. I think Pharrell's could be the best, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's the engravings. Anyway, guys, you let me know what you think. Uh, is there any, what's your, what's your favorite 30s and your favorite 60s out of that? Uh, Isabella's, I, I like, but I don't think it's going to make Isabella meta, so it's not going to be worth it. So, yeah. That's pretty much it for Graveborn Engravings. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.